Welcome, everyone. We're so excited to have you here for Enhanced Records, Montana subject headings, which, Kylie, you and I were, as we were kind of preparing for this over the last couple of months, we, we um, I guess this title really excited me um, <laughs> because it's all about Montana, right? And um, also helping people to discover and to um, be able to fully describe the unique items that we have in our collections that celebrate Montana. So um, with that, um, Kylie McGregor, or yeah, Kylie <laughs> McGregor, that's your name. It's uh, me. I, it is you. I would like to just turn things over to you to get us started on this very, to me, actually, I, I'm being sincere. This is a really exciting topic for me because um you know, lots of people come to us, they want to know more. And just over the years, it seems like the more interest there is in Montana, um, the way that we can surface and allow people to discover those things through their catalog is, is a really great opportunity to help people understand what Montana is all about. Very much so. I don't know if we have a couple house cleaning things, housekeeping things, how we gather. Um, if folks want to rename themselves with their name and their library or town, that lets us know where you're coming from. As Cole said, feel free to share your questions in the chat or raise your hand to speak. You know the hosts today. You've got me on the left here, uh, Kylie McGregor, the MSC trainer, and Cole Barto, our CE continuing education coordinator. Cole rhymes with Ole. We had a lot of fun with uh, that, that way of helping people know how to pronounce our names. So today, really quickly, uh, first I'm gonna touch on the importance of subject headings in a library catalog, particularly for us Montana specific headings. Then I'll discuss things to consider before adding Montana subject headings to your bib records, demonstrate how to add them, and then I'll show you a BCA report that lists your library's collection of Montana authors and their works. All right, subject headings, they're important. Uh, they're important in any library catalog because they help us understand what a book or DVD or whatever is about. They're not the only field in the item or pardon me, the title bibliographic record that tells us what an item is about, but they're one of the important ones. We can also search the catalog by subject. We can narrow our results by subject. And for all these reasons, it's important to have useful and accurate subject headings in our bib records. Now, not every library in Montana, unfortunately, can set aside space for a Montana collection. And even if your library has a Montana room or a Montana section or a few shelves with Montana stuff on it, that doesn't necessarily mean it's intuitive. Are your Montana authors in one spot or are they mixed in with works about Montana written by folks from other places? Um, adding Montana specific subject tanks can help patrons and staff navigate all this better. So here's just a quick example. I searched the term poetry from the Missoula Public Library's catalog, which defaults to searching across the partner sharing group, right? And it was a typical keyword search. I didn't do anything fancy with it. And it returned over 5,500 results, which is great. There's a lot of content out there that may meet my needs, but since I was looking for poetry with maybe more of a Montana flavor, I expanded the subject facet in my search results and I started to kind of scroll. And I found subject headings like cowboys poetry and Montana poetry, which are both great options for narrowing down my search. However, some additional scrolling showed me the heading poets American Montana which seemed particularly special because I'd like to read the work of Montana poets, whether they're writing about Montana or not. And choosing that heading alone would winnow my results list down to 21. Now let's talk more about the process of adding Montana subject headings. Things to know before you start. First of all, 
these subject headings are considered non-standard. So you only have to add them to a bibliographic record in workflows and not in the OCLC bibliographic record. That's something important to note and probably a source of relief for some of our copy catalogers out there. Second, please don't worry about going back and adding these headings to older items in your collection. Just consider adding them going forward. And I'll quickly revisit this point when we talk about the Montana Authors List report in Blue Cloud Analytics or BCA. Finally, please, please review the criteria and instructions available in our knowledge base before adding any of these subject headings. And uh, myself, or I believe a couple of the system administrators on this call can share those links in the chat once the presentation is finished. And it will also, we'll have those links available to refer to after the presentation. So don't worry about that. So talking about criteria, um, as we get into the meat and potatoes of this presentation, I've set this slide up kind of like an if-then statement. So on the left, if the author or creator of the work you're cataloging meets at least one of the following criteria, you can add the subject heading that applies. So if they currently live in Montana, if they were born and raised here, if they wrote the book or performed the work or what have you while living here, or they lived in Montana for a substantial length of time at any point in their life, you can add one or more of the subject headings listed um, depending on what applies. So for example, we can have uh, Authors American Montana, Poets American Montana, that's the one I pointed to earlier, musicians from Montana, musical groups, and actors and actresses from Montana. And then really briefly, if the story takes place in Montana and it doesn't already have a subject heading indicating that, you can add the subject heading in the 651 field that says, hey, this is a work of fiction that took place in Montana. And on the left is my dog, Ghost, in the photo, who is currently in Montana. So I thought that was appropriate. Just going back really quickly to the previous slide, the headings, the uh, article that we'll refer you to if you want to look at this criteria later or have instructions for adding the subject headings, it talks about the 6XX fields. And that's just saying, hey, in the 600 fields, you're gonna be adding subject headings generally in the 650 or 651. So I'll show you in this demo how to do that. So now I'm gonna show you how to add a Montana specific subject heading in real time. I'm using the book Black River by S.M. Hulse as my example. Let's say that the author, if she had been born in or grown up in Montana, I believe she attended college at the University of Montana. So I'm gonna say, okay, she's a Montana author. So once I'm logged into workflows, I make sure to go into the cataloging module and I'm gonna open the modify title wizard, which is in the title maintenance dropdown. It should be the second one in there. Now I've already searched for this record, but I'm gonna do it again here, just searching by title. And I already know that this first result here is the record I want. So I'm gonna click modify. Now it takes me automatically into the bibliographic record. Make sure you'll see here, I'm on the bibliographic tab. And what you're gonna do I'm gonna scroll down and I'm looking at these subject headings, widowers, fiction, step families, loss, all of these. And you'll see they're in the 650 and we also have 651, one for Montana fiction, which is great. But what if I wanna add one for Montana author? I'm gonna click into one of the fields and I'm gonna go up here and say, okay, 
I want to add a field after the one that I'm already in. And that'll give me a fresh slot to add my own subject heading. So if I refer to the instructions, I know this is going to be a 650 field. And when I tab over, I know the first indicator is a blank space. And the second indicator is going to be a zero. And tab over again. And what I've done is I've just copied directly from the article. And I'm pasting in Authors American Montana. And it looks like I saved it already. But let's say that this didn't exist here before. I'm going to click Save. And then if I just look it up, for example, in a different wizard, pardon me, and I go to bibliographic, scroll down, you'll see here it is, 650 Authors American Montana, which once we, um, you know, things get updated in enterprise periodically, you'll be able to see that subject heading when you do a search in, uh, in enterprise. So I'll make sure to fix that once we're out of this presentation. However, now that you know that's one example of adding a subject heading to a record, but what about if you just want to have access, for example, as a staff person to a list of your Montana collection? One way you can do that is to get a list of Montana authors from Blue Cloud Analytics and you can narrow it down by your library and other parameters if you so choose. Here's what that looks like. So for this example, I ran this list for the Missoula Public Library indicating that I only wanted to see items in their adult collection, not their children or young adult collection. You can also narrow it down by um, other parameters. But you can see that I get a list of titles and their call numbers that are organized alphabetically by author. So it starts out with Rick Bass and goes down and, and so on. And this is three pages worth of uh, titles and authors. Again, it would be bigger if I had included juvenile or young adult. Um, let's see, this is... a. Uh, when I'd like to point out that the MSC system administrators have hard coded this report to include well-known Montana authors, even when the bib records for these titles may not include the Montana author subject heading. Um, this is why we discourage you from retroactively adding Montana specific subject headings because um, in some ways that work has been done uh, to reflect that, for example, in Blue Cloud Analytics. To see a list of authors that have already been accounted for in this report, you can uh, check out our knowledge base article on the topic so you can know whether or not, oh, it's worth my time to add the Montana author subject heading or not. So that was actually a pretty quick presentation. Do folks have questions? In the meantime, I am going to add links to the relevant knowledge base articles in our chat. Oh, looks like they may already have been added. I just added the one, um, Kylie. I'll add the second one as well. Thank you so much. And Kylie, just for the sake of demonstration, too, while people are maybe formulating their questions, would mm -hmm. you like to, uh, if it's possible, to just demo on the website where to find all the knowledge bases? Most definitely. One second. Excellent. So for me, uh, there are a couple different ways that you can get to this page, and I'm sure Cole could show you one as well. If you go to services to library, and if you go to Knowledge Base and Help Desk, and there's probably a faster way to get here, but basically you'll get to a landing page from a couple different ways in our uh, website for library services for support. And you'll see that you can click to submit a support request. 
um, you need to make sure to have an Okta account. But if you do that, if you uh, click on the services to libraries menu at the blue and then go over to the left in the first column of options, ah, library services support page there. Excellent. And so then, now uh, I'll do this. Base, and then yeah. the knowledge bases are below if you scroll down. Excellent. So we have Aspen, the history portal, the shared catalog, which I'm a part of, research and evaluation, and statewide projects. And they each kind of have their own little description. But if you go to the Montana shared catalog, it'll take you to our knowledge base. And you'll see on the left, one way to navigate is through the categories, which are similar when you're opening a ticket, you can select certain categories to help us help you with your problem. You can also search the knowledge base. So if I did Montana subject headings, it'll prompt you to uh, log in. Again, you would do it as a citizen. If I were doing it, uh, I'm a state employee, so I can do a state login. But all that to say, sorry about that, Kalei, I didn't practice much ahead of no, time. No, no. I kind of surprised you with that, but um. it's okay. So I just clicked the link, one of the links that uh, Laura shared in the chat. And so, for example, we have an article on edit editing bibliographic records. We have a few on editing records, but this one deals specifically with subject headings, the 6XX tags. So it talks about what the subject headings look like, what the criteria is for that, and then the steps that I showed you for doing that. Um, you can also use the breadcrumbs at the top of any knowledge base article to go back to that knowledge base. And again, I recommend using the search functionality. Sometimes scrolling doesn't get you exactly where you need to be right away. Um, so Anders has a question for you. And um, Anders, if you want to unmute and ask, or I can read it for you, whichever is your preference, but it, this is a really good question. So actually I can always read it out loud. Okay. Uh, question regarding the criteria for adding these headings and how authorship is defined. Is the heading reserved for authors of fiction and popular nonfiction, or would a Montana-based researcher be characterized as an author as well. For instance, the author of technical reports or research reports. Laura, would you like to answer that question? Yeah, or Melody, you can chime in. Or too. Melody, yeah, we yeah, got you both on uh, here. We're both here. It, it, you know, Anders, that's a great question, and that's something I see Maggie from the Historical Societies on here as well. It's like everything you own is kind of a Montana author, right? And so. I would say, is it useful? Is it a useful heading for you to add for your researchers? And we haven't made a, you know, we don't have a stance on it. I mean, your your researchers are born and raised, they're writing in Montana. Um, I, you know, it, as long as the criteria we have applies and it's useful, you can do it. You're not, no one is required to do this work. Um, it's if it's useful to you and your researchers and you see this as a way to really pull together research done by Montana authors as opposed to research done, you know, transportation research done by Montana authors versus not, you, we can um, we can work with you on adding that because you would have a whole lot of work to do on those. Um, we one other thing I want to say, though, about this report, the BCA report and why some Authors are sort of hard coded, if you will, in there. Um, is it, it and and not all of them are is because it does slow the report down to have all of those individual authors in there. So for the report to work quickly, I guess adding the um, subject heading of authors, comma American Montana will help that. Um, and it, it would be hard for us to manually add in every Montana author in that way, um, if that makes sense. And did I did I answer your question, Anders? Okay. Great. 
And Melody, did you have anything to add to that? I, I don't think so. I think I agree with your your assessment of that. I mean, I think in the special libraries, especially you know, specifically the, the Montana, the state um, libraries, um, I think it probably is kind of assumed that a lot of those things are Montana. So is it going to be helpful? Is it going to be worth your time? Um, I mean, I guess you could kind of do those searches and assume that a lot of the things are going to be Montana specific, but yeah, I think it comes down to whether it's worth your time uh, in the special libraries, and what and what I mean by that is whether it's going to be useful for searchers. So I think you covered that. But yeah, thank you. Need to decide. Other questions, or especially from our libraries, you know, that are maintaining and building Montana collections. Are there tips or or questions from your experience of building those collections that you would like to share? Please, please feel free to throw those in the chat, or if you have something, um, you may unmute yourself and speak away. Kylie, this is going to be a, a very generic question, but previously um, our Montana section got... Um, all the books got processed, even if they had Montana content. So we know that we have a, a project ahead of us to um, separate authors and add those back to our regular fiction. Is there some some way we can research those Montana authors other than just um, a generic Google search? That's a great question. Does anyone have any thoughts? Yeah, I was going to say, I think some of the other librarians here would be qualified to answer that question. Mm -hmm. Although I will say we do have an <laughs> article on this BCA report that does list a lot of um, better known, I suppose, or prolific Montana authors. So you at least have that list to refer to. Um, we recently went through ours, Tina, and um, it was really complicated. I actually had one of our clerks like just individually researching the authors that we weren't sure about because we had a bunch that were put as Montana authors that we couldn't really find a reason why they would be that way. So I would love it if there were a shorter method also, but I'm not sure if there is. This seems like, um, you know, like it seems like it would be something that we would have as kind of an authoritative list of Montana authors that that meet the criteria. But um, I would be really curious to know, um, like Beth uh, and, and some of the others, you know, if if even like with the Montana Book Award lists or if there is such a beast out in the world of, you know, Montana library land that we could rely on as a more authoritative source. Well, and we have so many locally, like local authors, people who self-publish now, we get a lot of requests to help with cataloging with those. So I think it's it's kind of hard to have, I mean, we can have definitely a list going of the ones that have been established, but there will always definitely be some that we don't know about without doing a little research. Um, but I am in support of having kind of a, a list if, if, if possible, we would just have to work out how it would be uh, possible to collaboratively add to that. Yeah, it, it's it's a, a more complex and interesting challenge than um, than we went than we might think. Or so, Tina, this is a great question, um, and it's something you know whether it's reports through BCA that kind of helps generate a basic list, or I don't know if that would work in in and of itself. Kalei, would you like me to move through any of the other slides? Um, sure. I, we are getting towards the end of our time here. And definitely, if you'd like to go through that, and I, I'll jump in too. So we have 
all kinds of things. We'll be posting the slides for this session along with the recording in Aspen. So the easiest way to do that is just go back to the calendar and access that information that will be available later today. And the next slide is looking for that recording too. You don't have to go to the calendar, but you can go to our YouTube channel and you'll see the newest videos pop up in the playlists for the webinar series. And as we move, move forward, we have another uh, program. We're doing fewer webinars over the summer because we know you have other things to do during the summertime, um, even though a couple of you did say that this you know, webinars were your favorite thing to do during the summer. But July 30th, Bryce Maxwell will be joining us to do a session on submitting information to the Mon Montana Natural Heritage Program using the iNaturalist application. So check that out. Check the Aspen calendar. We'll be adding more things uh, for the fall and into the winter um, over the next month or so. And uh, we love to have your feedback. Uh, you can snap that QR code or I'll drop a link in the chat here uh, for you to share your evaluation um, and feedback data with us. And with that, uh, if there are any questions about accessing resources or continuing education credit for today's session, uh, you can just reach out to me or as always, um, Kylie and the whole MSC team are there to help you use those new service support tickets to, um, you know, get those questions in the mix and, and get us um, prompted to answer your questions. So with that, thank you so much, Kylie and everyone who joined um, as thoughts and ideas occur to you in response to the questions that we've been talking about, don't hesitate to reach out with those as well. So thank you, Kylie. I would like to have you have the last word today. Excellent. Thank you for having me and just really excited to have everyone who joined and those who are viewing the recording. Um, we definitely want to help you guys in any way, regardless of whether it's highlighting your Montana authors or other uh, questions or concerns you have about your collection. So don't hesitate to reach out.